I am Lord Corporal Ford, and this is Uncopy. The police are currently investigating what is the weirdest daytime assault I've heard in quite some time, involving a short, skinny man and an officer guarding the home of Chief Justice Roxanne George. According to police, around 2 p.m. yesterday, a 5 foot 4 inch skinny, dark skinned man with a shirt or a mask approached the female rank at the home and pointed a gun at her before swinging a punch but missing entirely. She called out for her colleague who ran to the scene. The suspect then took aim, causing the rank to jump for cover. Then the suspect dropped said object and then jumped over the fence and fled. When the officers picked up the weapon, it turns out the gun was actually a toy. Either this is a very stupid child, or midgets are out here robbing people. Either way, both the opposition did not hesitate to make the incident political, and instead of taking the high road, the government decided to jog them right back. The government is attempting to do something that successive administrations have failed to do. That is to bring order to the Starbrook Market Square. Last week, the Ministry of Public Works said that it would reorganize the vendors selling in the market's vicinity, and now the Ministry of Home Affairs is seeking to address the current traffic congestion and road safety issues at Big Market Square. They also emphasize the need to maintain health and safety practices in the face of the Rona. This includes providing sanitation stations where people can receive a free face mask. Well, that sounds nice. According to the Civil Defense Commission, as of Wednesday, five former squatters from Success have taken occupancy at the CDC's temporary shelter at Graham's Hall Primary School in Cummings Lodge. At the facility, strict Rona guidelines and protocols are enforced. Meals, hygiene products, sleeping, bathing, and other facilities are also provided. The squatters were forced to vacate Kaisuka's land on the East Coast as they seek to resume operations there. The issue has been a major source of contention over the past weeks, following a standoff between law enforcement officers and the squatters last month. Best Buy Auto Sales is Guiana's number one auto dealer. Their prices are competitive, and they sell their vehicles with warranty, so you could have some peace of mind. Visit their showrooms at 171 Peter Rose Street, Queenstown, or Lot 2 Lamaha Street, Georgetown, and find out about their special Christmas deal. Police are on the hunt for three men who murdered 18-year-old Adrian Perlet during an argument over money. Perlet was stabbed in the chest outside a friend's house in Georgetown last night after three men approached him demanding money. They began to argue and Perlet started to walk away. They then followed him and stabbed him in the chest. He died early this morning while receiving medical treatment. After getting 24 hours to stretch their legs, two of the three Lusignan prison escapees have been caught. Alex Matthias and Arnold Kennedy were recaptured at Sealot Public Road East Bank Esquibo. However, they are still looking for murder and robbery accused Mark Rafino of Good Intent Village West Bank de Marara. But, but, but sorry people, I've got to stop for a second. Look at Kennedy's face. Just look at him. He looks like a child when recess is cut short. A grocery shop in Anna Katrina, West Coast de Marara, was burglarized late last night. A number of items valued at a total of $633,000 were carted off. Police said the items included alcohol and non-alcoholic beverages, perfumes, cigarettes, electrical fans, hammocks, and female purses. Police investigations are ongoing. Now is a good time to remind you that robbery season is back. If I were you, I would consider getting security for the home business. Sheriff Security Service is a good choice. I find that they are the most professional with well-trained armed or unarmed guards. Get some security this Christmas, people! The Ministry of Health has ordered 20,000 rapid antigen tests for selective insulin regions. These are tests that are used to detect for the Rona. Minister Anthony said, because this test is faster, it may be more practical for use in remote insulin areas. Most of these regions lack the requisite equipment and staff to increase the detection and processing rate of new cases there. So, while the rapid tests are less accurate than the traditional way, these new tests are supposed to give you results in just 45 minutes instead of, well, lord knows when. The 20,000 tests are expected to arrive sometime next month. It's now time for today's Rona Report. Today, the nation recorded 27 new cases. The total number of deaths now stands at 117. There are now 16 persons in the ICU and 121 persons in home isolation. The total number of known cases in the country is now 3,877. So, please people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. 
When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds, and remember to give six feet of space between you and others. Now, let's take a look at news in the region and around the world. Trinidad and Tobago's Energy Minister Franklin Kahn says, as of yesterday, the FSO Nabarima is all bright and stable with no visible tilt and there is no imminent risk of tilting or sinking. This is after Venezuela's state oil company, PDVSA, began efforts to relieve the FSO Nabarima of its cargo as well as remedial works being done to the ship. As of Tuesday, major maintenance began on the vessel with pumps and electrical motors being repaired and replaced. This has led Khan to believe that there is now a minimal risk of an oil spill in the Gulf of Paria. Nevertheless, Trinidad and our government continue to monitor the situation. Human rights group Amnesty International said security forces killed at least 12 people in Lagos, Nigeria on Tuesday. Nigeria's army has denied the shootings, provoking more anger from the public. Earlier, Nigeria's vice president promised justice for the victims who were shot during protests against police brutality. Nigeria has seen widespread rioting and attacks on police and prisons since the shooting. This has triggered multiple state governments to impose indefinite 24-hour curfews. The protests began about two weeks ago with mostly young people demanding the disbandment of a notorious police unit, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SARS. Using the hashtag and SARS, protesters rallied thousands to the streets. The hashtags have even grabbed the attention of many celebrities around the world who have since started a campaign to stop the violence. Don't fall for these get-rich-quick schemes, people. There is a legit way you can earn some extra costs to supplement your existing hustle. Sell top-up. You could become a top-up vendor quick and easy by linking Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 685-3109 for more info. And now for our weird news story of the day. The Norwegian official responsible for daylight savings time in the country apologized for adding an additional hour to the year. Iceland Naibo, whose duties as Minister of Trade and Industry include implementing daylight savings time. She said the clocks will be set back an hour Sunday morning in accordance with the traditional time change. She also said, quote, as Minister of Time, I strongly regret that 2020 will be another hour longer. This has already been a very demanding year for many." End quote. Interestingly enough, the European Parliament voted in 2019 to bark a proposal to eliminate a light saving sign by 2021. The proposal has not been ratified. You use proper lube on your sweet woman, don't you? Then why not your engine? Keep your engine running smooth with Syntec lubricants, manufactured specifically for tropical climates and built for hard-working engines. Syntec is available nationwide and is imported and distributed by Caribbean Motor Spares. Call them on telephone number 609-7621. Syntec's lubricants drives your journey. Moving on to our uncut news views poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your responses in the comments, and we just might read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, what are some other reforms that the Bank of Guyana should consider to make financial services easier for the average Guyanese? Lloyd Bartholomew said, it is commendable that the bank is allowing Guyanese to open an account with one piece of ID. When would they allow Guyanese abroad to open accounts with online access and bill paying capabilities? I had to open an account with Scotia, and they do not pay interest on foreign resident accounts, but charge a monthly service charge and other complicated rules, like in-bank activity on your accounts. Wow, that makes no sense, but you are exactly right, they need to do something about that. And Spartan Otaku said, if I'm being honest, it may just be my ignorance, but I believe they should make all their processes and functions, etc. more common knowledge. As an emerging adult, I feel rather foolish at a time when I'm in a formal place and have no clue on what's going on. I get through eventually, just going with the flow, but it'd be nice to know. You know what, Spartan, you are absolutely correct, and the bank's website offers little, very little educational material on the matter. Good answers, people. So tonight I leave you with this question. The government is trying to bring order to the Starbrook Market Square. What suggestions would you give them? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good, we just might feature it in Friday's episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Noriko Bullford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here. 
or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!